Almost half of his professional fights have ended in knockout. Tonight, he comes for the belt. Here is Yusri Belgari. and says, I'll do it again for the title. Yeah, he's very confident, very vocal after beating Pereira at Glory 40 Copenhagen, especially in his last fight. He just looked so dominant uh, with a TKO win over Jason Wilness, the former middleweight champion. So Belgari has a ton of confidence coming in tonight. Yusri Belgari, 23 and three with 11 knockouts. He's only 25 years old. And Joe, every time we've seen him fight, he gets better and better. Yeah, and that's because he comes from the good camp in Mike's gym and he's putting the time in. He's training twice a day, every day, right after his camp, he's back into training. So um, he's, he's got the team to make him better. Maybe the most confident fighter on the card tonight. He feels it's a foregone conclusion that he'll be the middleweight champion telling Alex Pereira, make sure to remember to bring the belt because it's mine and I want to take it home. contender tournament champion in his debut in Zagreb. Here is Alex Pereira. a Glory middleweight champion. He won it in October, Joe, and Glory will be going to Brazil next year in April. He was given the choice. Hey, do you want to wait and defend your title in Brazil? He said, no, I want to get back in the ring as soon as possible. And here he is two months later defending his title against a very dangerous opponent. Yeah, and he's defending it against the guy he lost to. So in that last fight, he said he hurt his shin and he wasn't able to use his kicks because it was a tournament format and they met in the finals. So he says he's fully healed, he's a complete fighter, and, but I still feel his advantage is in his boxing, but let's see if he could mix up his strikes really well. And according to Nick Kalenkis, Alex Pereira, the champion, is a two to one underdog. Here is our tail of the tape for this, the glory middleweight championship of the world. Yusri Belgari, 25 years old. He's six foot five. That's an inch taller than Pereira, but it's Pereira who has an inch and a half reach edge. Looking at professional experience, both guys still very experienced, but it's Pereira that has the edge in professionals. Here's our fight metric report. Alex Pereira has been knocked down once. Belgari has not been knocked down, but he did stop. Jason Wilness with a big cut over his eye, so that's not technically a knockdown, but it was a TKO. And you're gonna see just how active a fighter Belgari is. He likes to throw and he gets hit less, where Pereira's more even with a strike differential. Championship rules, we will go five rounds if need be. Three minutes each, punches, kicks, and knees are the legal strikes. Three knockdowns in a round or four in the fight, and we've got a TKO. Let's take a look at the scoring for the fight using the following prioritized criteria, starting with knockdowns, followed by cumulative damage inflicted, followed by number of clean scoring strikes with an emphasis on spectacular techniques. Finally, if there's no clear advantage, judges are looking for aggression. We do have open scoring tonight. Five judges will score it on a 10-point must system. You'll know where each of these fighters stands after each and every round, and so will they. 
Let's take a look at my keys to glory. And it's for Pereira to utilize his boxing, and he's got to use his footwork against those vicious knees of Belgari, where Belgari's going to need to put the pressure on Pereira and mix up his strikes using his kicks and his knees. This is your headline super fight of the evening. Five rounds for the middleweight championship of the world. Featuring a champion, drawing on the warrior spirit of his ancestors, and a challenger fighting for the pride of his Dutch homeland. This bout sanctioned by the International Sport Kickboxing Association. And at the bell, your referee is Paul Nichols. From Rotterdam to Rome, glory kickboxing fans are watching in over 180 countries around the world. It's time for glory! Let's meet the challenger fighting out of the black corner. He is a European champion and contender tournament champion coming in on a four-fight win streak. His professional record, 23 wins with three losses, 10 of those wins coming by way of knockout. At six feet, five inches tall, 1.96 meters, he weighed in at 186 and one half pounds, 84.5 kilograms. Fighting out of Tunisia, he is the number one contender in the world. He is Yusri Belgali. His opponent fighting out of the white corner claimed the belt with a dominant performance in Guangzhou. His professional record, 26 wins with six losses and 16 career knockouts. At six feet, four inches tall, 1.94 meters, he weighed in at 187 and one half pounds and even 85 kilograms. He's here in Rotterdam tonight, fighting out of Sao Paulo, Brazil, and is the reigning and defending glory middleweight champion of the world. It's Alex Poetan. Once again, your referee in charge of this championship bout is Paul Nichols. Gentlemen, you understand the rules that you're fighting to. Protect yourself at all times, obey my commands at all times. It's a world title fight, so I expect you to fight for it. Touch gloves if you like. Neither man is intimidated. Well, Alex Pereira lose his title almost as soon as he won it, or can he beat Belgari in front of his home fans? Here we go, five rounds for the middleweight championship of the world. Pereira came out with a lot of good energy, trying to bring the fright right away to Belgari. A lot of trash talk between these two, through translators, of course. High kick from Belgari. Yeah, Belgari's gonna do a good job at mixing his strikes, mixing his kicks and his knees. Where Pereira's gonna focus a lot on his boxing. Belgari training out of Big Mike's gym in Amsterdam. And a nice uppercut from Belgari. Great! That's the pressure he needs to put on against Pereira. I talked to Myrtle Brunhardt, who fights out of the same gym, asked him what he thought about sparring with Belgari. He says, I hate it. Not so much because he beats me up, because I can't hit him. Six foot five inches. Nice combo there from Belgari. Yep. Belgari's knees are very dangerous. That's how we got Jason Wilness. He's going to mask those knees behind punches. And this is the first time Belgari's going five rounds. So let's see how the extra two rounds, if it goes that far, play out. Bel or Pereira, rather, his career began as a boxer was very successful, but fell in love with kickboxing and made the switch. Turns out it was a very good move. But he is very hand-based, is he not, Joe? Yeah, very hand-based, but his, he keeps saying that he's a complete kickboxer now, and we have seen some kicks from him in this fight so far. Belgari sticking and moving inside, outside, oh, he's hit. Great. Pereira right on the Great. temple with a right hand. Yeah, he's moving on angles, too, trying to find that lead uppercut. Oh, 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 oh. Break! 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 
Bill Garwe, 25 years old. Big Mike told us, I knew I had a champion the moment he stepped in my gym. It's tonight the night he cashes in on that promise. Bill Garwe switching stances for a second. Probably something they've been working on. Total strikes, you can see it's Belgarwi who's outlanded the Brazilian, two to one. Break! Fight! Nice left hook from Pereira. That caught Belgarwi. Pereira's got some sneaky power to him. There's another shot. Right as the bell rings. So a very entertaining round one. It flew by. Joe, who do you give the edge to there? It was a very exciting round. It, it started off with Pereira, but I think I'm going to give the, a, a slight advantage to Belgari in this round. In the corner of Pereira is Guto Innocent, a top five ranked heavyweight. And here's a little bit more about Pereira. He's nicknamed Coatan, tra traditional name among the indigenous people of Brazil. In his fighting style, we told you, basically a boxer with some kicks every now and then. His opponent, Yusri Belgari, as Todd mentioned, only 25 years old from Mike's gym. Recently changed from being a kicker into more of a puncher. Being able to diversify his attacks, he won the contender tournament at Glory 40 Copenhagen with a win against his opponent tonight, Alex Pereira. Guto Innocent is in the corner for Pereira, but he also has some more fans here that made the trip. Yeah, Big Nog came uh, to support Pereira and Guto himself, so we've got to see Big Nog around the hotel all week. Round two scheduled for five. The middleweight championship of the world is on the line. Nice question mark kick for Belgaro. And all five judges did give it to Usri. Nice combination work from Pereira. Good combination for Bilgarwi, who's putting on the pressure now. Yeah, that's his key to this fight. He's got to stay busy. Another knee in the corner. Pereira's absorbing some of these shots, blocking a few as well. A lot of energy expenditure for for Belgari, let's see if he can manage to sustain the pace. Break! Fight! Break! the head. Fight! Paul Nichols warning Belgari for the shots to the back of the head. Belgari, or excuse me, Pereira telling us that he eats, sleeps, and dreams about kickboxing. That's all he does. He has no hobbies. All he is is a fighter. That's why he wanted to get back in the ring so soon after winning the world title over in China. And what was his key to winning that fight against Simon Marcus back in October? Well, he was doing a good job using his boxing and, and attacking going backwards, which was a good strategy for him. And he's got to stay busier here. He did throw a good body punch in the mix. Break! Watch for him. Watch for him. Fight! Spinning back fist, Pereira saw it coming. Pereira 26 and 6 with 16 wins by knockout. That's a 61% knockout ratio. He's got the power in both hands. Yeah, and he's really relying on his left hook. Seems like he's really trying to catch Busey with the left. I do like what Pereira caught him with the right. Belgori goes sprawling back into the ropes. Belgari claims it didn't hurt him, but it seemed like a very legitimate shot from Pereira. 
And there's another one. And Belgari looked like he almost went down. He's wobbly right now. Pereira closing in, and he gets a shot off after the bell. What an explosive finish there to round two. Belgarwi wanted to go after Pereira. It, was, it looked like a late shot from Pereira, but at the end of the first round, I think Usri hit Pereira late. Let's take you back to the end of the round here, the best moment of the fight for Pereira by far. Yeah, that was that solid right hand. We can't hear when the bell went, but it was definitely after the bell. Paul Nichols doing a good job keeping Belgarwi away. This thing could have gotten out of hand. Usri needs to stay calm and relaxed. There's a lot of fight left. Here's that shot in real time. Clearly after the bell. Yeah, really late. Paul Nichols could have taken a point away for sure. Yeah, easily. But I think in the end of the first round, is Ustry who threw not as bad of a late what? shot, but both guys need to keep their emotions in check. Well, lost in the commotion there, that late punch is the fact that Pereira rocked Belgarwi for sure. Let's see if the judges gave the Brazilian round two. Only one did, the other four going with Belgarwi. So he has a two round lead on four judges' scorecards. The other one has it even. Who would you have scored that round for? Well, I kind of like Pereira just because of the damage in that shot, but Belgari's output is really dominating as well, so still a close round regardless. And who knows if Belgari wasn't close to the ropes when he went sprawling backwards, he may have gone down with that punch. Either way, it's a confidence booster for Pereira, who knows that he can hurt Belgarwi. Nice jab. Break. Seems like those knees are the way to go for Belgarwi. Yeah, his knees are so vicious when he mixes them with his punches. Break. But Pereira has some dangerous knees of his, his own. Two tall middleweights, six foot five and six foot four. That was a hard knee that almost hit the body. Total knees. Five for Pereira, a little bit surprising. Usri's finding a good home with that right hand. Both guys are. A couple of punches landed. You can see the spit flying out of Belgarwi's mouth. Yeah, that was a left hook from Pereira. On a right hand, buckles Belgarwi. He almost went down. Can Pereira close the show? Belgarwi going to be given an eight count because the ropes kept him up. A massive cut exploding over the right eye of Belgarwi. And it's over instantly. The doctor says no. It's done. And Pereira has defended his middleweight championship. Way to come back for Pereira. He was down two rounds, was able to come back, and that's actually how Usri stopped Jason Wilness. I think Pereira found a good knee in that exchange. Here's a look at what happened there. A massive shot right there. Sent Belgarwi backwards, and here comes another one. Yeah, there was that started with that right hand. And I have to think it was possibly a nice left knee there in that exchange that did that cut. All from that right hand, stumbled him back. Tried that left, oh, he did land a good left hook to the and, body. And Beautiful there's, setup. There's the knee, and how ironic is it that in Belgarwi's last fight, it was a knee to Jason Wilness that stopped the fight because of a cut, and Pereira just did the same thing to Belgar. Yeah, that setup was beautiful because he hit the body of U3, which brought his elbow down and opened up the knee to the head. Beautiful setup from Pereira. And there he is, and still, middleweight champion of the world, Alex Pereira. We make it official when we return to the Glory Super Fight Series. Welcome back to the Sold Out Ahoy Arena in Rotterdam, and what a show Alex Pereira put on there in round three. Yeah, in the first two rounds, it was Belgarra being the busier fighter, really landing good punches, mixing in his knees. And the second round, too, was a better round for Pereira, but the judges still gave it to Belgarri. 
But that's how that end it ended with Belgari getting frustrated with the late hit from Pereira. And then in round three, Pereira found a home with that right hand, came in, hit the body, and just finished with that nice left knee, splitting Yusri Belgari's eye right open. A great job by Paul Nichols to jump right in there. He saw how bad that cut was. The doctor looked at it for about a half second and said, Belgari is done. Here's your final strike count statistics. 50 landed strikes for Pereira compared to 63 for the Tunisian. Strikes landed by zone. Belgari really focusing on the head punches and his kicks to the body. But ultimately, it was that knee from Pereira that did the finish. Ladies and gentlemen, our ringside doctor has stopped this contest. With an official time of one minute, 52 seconds of that third round, it's ruled a technical knockout for your winner. And still, glory middleweight champion of the world, Alex Pereira! Here to present the glory belt, our chief executive officer, John Franklin, and glory board member from Liberty Global, Mr. Bruce Mann. Congratulations, and still, you guys have fought before in the past. Was there anything that surprised you about Belgari this time around? Parabéns, Alex, pela sua vitória. E teve alguma coisa que te surpreendeu em relação à última luta sobre o Bulgari? Não, eu acho que não. Nada foi surpresa. Ele fez o mesmo jogo. No primeiro foi um pouquinho diferente. Tentou colocar algumas técnicas. Não ficou aquele jogo amarrando. Deu para me desenrolar bem o primeiro round. E no segundo foi a mesma coisa. Ele veio um pouquinho diferente, mas Talvez, talvez um pouquinho mais fácil para mim. Yeah, not surprise me, but he did a little different game. But I was ready for everything. Then not surprise me. Thank you so much. Congratulations again, Rotterdam. Give it up for your champion. Well, he earned it, Joe. And it was funny when we had our fighter interviews. Afterwards, Alex Pereira walked over to to Tim Hughes and said, let me hear it, and made Tim say, and still. Yeah, he needed that extra little motivation.